Hi and I'd welcome back to another album review. Today we are doing Ultra 85 by Logic. Now, um, I heard from rumors that this was supposed to be a particular version or at least a continuation of uh, The Incredible True Story. And surprisingly, this was actually very interesting because I didn't want to actually think that this was. But when I got into this album, I thought, hmm, maybe it might be. And then once I finished it, I was like, wow, maybe it is. So, um, without a doubt, let's get right into it. And um, let me say one thing. This is one of the ranges that Logic does do on almost every album he does. It's either between a 9.1 and a 9.7. He's done this a lot. And um, yeah, this is uh, one of the few things that gets interesting. Like his highest, his probably his highest album that he's actually ever gotten a 9.7 on was Under Pressure. And it was a 9.7. It was one of his best albums out there. Include it. Everybody, a lot of people would say it was everybody. But then again, people need to remember that everybody was a very, 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 very interesting album. But the problem was, was that it still stood between a 9.5 range. It didn't improve itself to actually outbeat Under Pressure. So, eh, what can you do? So, without a doubt, let's see how this goes. Um, the last rating for The Incredible True Story was a, again, 9.5. And it actually did super well. So I'm kind of curious to see um, how much this one improves. Because I'm actually very, very interested to see how this goes. So, um, yeah, let's get right into it. <clears throat> so we're going to start with the first song, and it was about nine minutes, with a shout-out from Paul Rodriguez and a particular um, set of um rap that actually did like start out the introduction and then mixed in with the same characters that literally came in from the incredible true story um featuring thomas and i think uh kai and um i forgot their other robot's name it's been a while um <laughs> but please put it up here just make sure because i did forget so it's been a bit so i'm just waking up it's like seven right now so please bear with me um, but yeah, um, all three of them come through and they start out their introduction by going on the next mission. And, um, I gave it a 9.6 because to be quite honest, um, I did say like, you have to be very mindful on what you do on this. Cause I said this before, like you can outrange the introduction, but the problem is you have to make sure that it's of substance that can actually get through the story. Cause understandable if you wanted to keep with like a shout out from um somebody and then put it in the first introduction to the album um but the problem is is with that is that like one i can understand from a graphical standpoint if you're trying to like make like a shout out to somebody who is actually famous and <clears throat> if you want to put them in there that's fine but remember if it's relevant to it go ahead do you and hey if you're recognized by that you put it in your album that's a good that's a plus for me that's a little plus for me like i said i'm not a fan of somebody like shortening it to like at least like a short minute intro um but i am very appreciative if somebody like makes the intro like at least like above five minutes because to be quite honest it's not that bad really because um regardless you're still gonna get like the rating that is like average for you um because depending on the caliber that you go in on this will be the utmost, utmost track that will literally mark what is going to happen on this album, which gradually it did. So let's get on to the next one. The next song is Mission Control, and uh, it was two minutes. And it, uh, I, I, I expected a little bit more, obviously, um, but I guess that's just me probably kind of being greedy, I guess. But, um... The song was like two minutes, so that's probably why I got like a 9.4, honestly. And um, I didn't expect any more than it actually did up until that point. Um, Deja Vu was a 9.3. Um, I wouldn't say it was that bad either, because it was just um, a lot of um, a lot of stuff that could have actually been better. And I think mostly it has something to do with not just the craft, just how the production was going with it. Like... It could have like done a little bit better 
it could have done a little bit better, but I feel like in that range, it could actually like, I think it balanced itself out. So I, I again, it's a 9.3. It's not exactly terrible. It's very good. Very good. So I'm not expecting any more from that. Um, this is the skit, uh, glorious ultra Panavision. This is a particular, uh, skit that I was actually interested in. Cause I was, if he was going to bring back skits, then this makes sense. Uh, this part definitely makes sense. Um, which I really, really appreciate about him when he did this particular album. Um, which I've always said this, like between this and the incredible true story is that you have to remember that it is a very, very, very delicate piece of art on that album. And putting it in a continuation from this is insane. So I happily respect this. So <clears throat> the next part is fear. Now, fear is a good one, too, because I think um, it kind of shows a little bit more about what he wants to talk about. He gives his perspective on fear a little bit, which is actually really, really interesting, too, because uh, primarily you would think that this would be the um, retrospect of everything. It did really well regardless of what it was. So, hey, you got to do what you got to do, you know? So, um, it got a 9.4. Not bad at all from his range standard. So, let's move on. Favela, 9.5. Giving references and all that stuff. That's good. You did really well with that one. Garden, 3. Now, this particular one I was actually very impressed with. Because regardless of what you say... This particular song is actually very, 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 very good. And I think in this standard, I think this proves a little bit of an example about why I say, like, people need to stop, like, pursuing this hate towards Logic. Because he can still do these things. It's just that he's not moving on the goalpost like everybody else expects him to. So you got to have to, like, expect that from him in that sense. Because... He's already, I think, if anyone doesn't know this, this is his rank right now. Like, he's chilling. The be this is the best rank he could possibly come up with at this point. Like, what more do you expect him to be? Like, what? <laughs> like, all right, man. Um, the next one is Ghost in the Machine featuring Robert Ivory and ADE. Um, I, I think it was something else. Um, entirely, it's like, it's probably like from a different country. I don't know how to say it. So please tell me in the comments below, because I have no clue how to say his actual name. Um, but I'm just going to just call him ADE for now. Sorry if I'm butchering it. Um, it's a 9.6. It did really, really well on this one. So not that bad at all. And, uh, let's move on. Interstellar with Lucy Rose. I have literally talked about the fact that intermission was a great great song and i think when you put interstellar with intermission and then put it to make a hint that this is similar in a continuation to the incredible true story this shows very very good stuff which in hindsight is super good it is super good and i really really appreciate that um <clears throat> So I gave it a 9.6. Very, very good. Very good stuff there, man. Very good. Now, in retrospect, this is a continuation from Mission Control. I didn't know that up until now, but now that I got the full context, a 9.4 in, in that regard is actually not that bad. Because if you, you're just introducing the entire thing, yeah, that's not that bad. And then putting in putting a continuation back into in retrospect that's not bad that's not bad at all um so it got a 9.6 uh 44 ever um this was actually a good one too a solid one um that i said that like hey he is doing phenomenal in and i think he 100 percent has done super well on so this got a 9.5 now the next few ones are going to be interesting here love me was actually an interesting one this one has got a 9.4 again um planet death which was a skit um based on <laughs> some of some of them playing an arcade game while they're doing their missions which is so funny 
<laughs> this was a funny one. So, again, a 9.7. He did really well with this one. Teleport, on the other hand. There was a music video I saw about this. And I probably should go and react to it after. Because I think I need to see what the hell I'm looking at. Because, no offense, I feel like this is one of the few run few things that I need to go through. Um, I'm probably going to do the reaction, like part time because um i'll probably update y'all on the video but i'm probably not gonna be able to like react to the video due to like copyright stuff and shit so <clears throat> so i'll probably do that um because teleport just came out on a new video so i wanted to literally go ahead and check that out chess is another one and those good skits uh with thomas because i think i made it clear like this man is an old oldie like 47 so it makes sense that he would be like messing around with chess and all that stuff <laughs> while Kai is just like one of the few modern aged type of uh, type of cats. Like it's, it's cool. It's cool. Antidote uh, featuring loopers. Please make sure to and tell me if I'm saying that wrong. Um, I hope I am. And it got a 9.2. Now I said this before. I'll say this again. This was a solid song. The production was there, but he lowered his craft a little bit because I think he just wanted to make, an, again, like I said, make another throwaway song. 9.2. Not bad. So, again, I for his standard, this is not that bad, really, for a throwaway song. Not a bad song at all. Um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. This one fantastic now i've said this i don't know if i said this before logic is always known to basically have one of those songs that are like a 9.8 out of 10 and this is one of them he does a good job at making a lot of movie references making a lot of good analogies metaphors everything across the board this is like his i would say in my opinion this is one of his best songs this is one of his best songs in in the album, and I really appreciate it too. Cause so, um, really good, really good stuff. Peace, love, and positivity. Nine point six, still a good song. Really, really appreciate it, honestly. Um, and it pretty much goes back on his retrospect of what he was talking about because he's all about that, pretty much. Um, he's been and and here's the other thing. I think a lot of people kind of do this because it's like he, they want to go back to the old logic and shit. But I think people fail to realize, like, this man has always been about that. Kill him with kindness, do all these things. This man's literally been all about, and I don't understand why people don't do realize this. This man's always been about peace, love, and positivity. Always have. And because I followed this man's trail for, like, since I was a kid. So um, I would know that this man literally has said this time and time again. He's always been like this. He's always been like this. So... I'm surprised when people literally say, like, oh, he's not the same anymore. Like, what? Okay, sure. But um, let's go to the next one. City and the Stars. This is a good song, 100%. This is one of his best, if not best songs he's gotten up until this point. This is, like, one of his best songs. And then the last one is Thank You for Believing in Me, which I think I've always said this before. This is a good way to end this album, 100%. Now, I will say this. This is actually pretty, pretty good. So, this is the end of the album, obviously. So, I'm very, very impressed on how he did this. So, let's get right into the number aspect. So, everything adds up. Um, I already did the numbers. Uh, they're obviously going to be right here. And I made sure I did the numbers right here, then and there. And when I did, they were very, very inclusive. Um, the numbers were very clear. Um, and... It translated straight to a 9.5 for his lyrics, which is not that bad. It's actually phenomenal. Um, again, so I wouldn't be surprised by that. Artistry, 9.8. Creativity, 9.8. And rhythm patterns, 9.9. .9. Now, this is what I was actually going to talk about earlier. Is that So, the difference between The Incredible True Story and this was that the rhythm patterns was a 9.8. This time, it's a 9.9, .9 because he's actually done very well with the rhythm patterns this time. And he did a phenomenal job with that. I didn't even think he would do that. But, yeah, he did really well with this, which I was very, very surprised. Because, again, every single part of the rhythm 
rhythm patterns in each song has literally done a phenomenal job on each side, which was very interesting because he increased it by at least by one, which was really good, really good so far. So, um, so flow 10, obviously this is logic we're talking about, ladies and gents. And let's not forget figurative language was, is a 9.5. Like said before, um, this is at least the limit he could possibly go. So I'm not expecting him to like go any higher. Um, but this is exactly the limit that he goes as far as figurative language, which is actually really, really good, really good for somebody like this. So very, very, very impressive performance. And the overall is a literal 9.7. This was actually, actually surprising on par with his Under Pressure album, which was surprising because you would think that his stuff didn't really like tamper with the rest of it, but he did very well with this. He did very, very well with this. And I'm very happy that this actually went well. So, good shit, good shit, good shit. Um, but yeah, this is about it, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, make sure to leave a like. Also, hit that subscribe button if you are new to the channel. it has been Zed, guys. Later. My, but, uh, yeah,